Anybody ever catch themselves scrolling through Facebook for hours? Yeah, you started, you know, this morning I started and all of a sudden it was a half hour later. I had to go preach this morning. And, you know, that's, that's exactly what happens is that we get pulled into it. And as we get pulled into it, a negative thing happens to us. Listen to this. This is from the University of Michigan. It's a study that they did. They had, they had uh, college students fill out a questionnaire regarding their overall life contentment. And for the next two weeks, they would respond to five daily texts that were sent to them, evaluating their current sense of well-being. And the results indicated that those who were, were on Facebook yeah, reported being less content than those who hadn't been active on any social media platform. And so, and so as they were watching it, they were becoming less content. Across the two weeks, it says, increased Facebook use was associated with declines in affect. The study states at the end of the research per period, those who used Facebook the most also reported a decline in overall satisfaction. It seems that in just two weeks, life in general seemed much worse for the active Facebookers. Isn't that amazing? So when you sit there and look at it, not only are you swallowing up great gobs of time, but you're headed towards this decline because social media intensifies that sense of discontent. And I gotta tell you, as the scripture says in James, that is not of God. We are idolizing others in the world in, in fragmented truth. The good stuff, right? The good stuff is right out in front of us. And, and even if you're not on Facebook, if you're feeling, hey, I don't do social media, even if you're there, I'm um, guessing you've turned on the television at some point. And all the game shows, you've won a prize! And TMZ, look what all the big people are doing. Look at the great stuff that's happening. It is all out there. And it's doing the same thing. We're starting to idolize this good life. And so often, this good life turns out to be a wreck. How many times do you hear of people who, who've made millions and end up in bankruptcy, who have, have lived the good life but fallen victim to drugs or alcohol because something's missing? That's what's happening. 1 Corinthians 10 speaks to this. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. Speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. And then listen to what it says. Tell me this isn't us. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not the sharing of the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not the sharing of the body of Christ? In other words, don't we already have what we need? Don't we already have it? Nobody? We have contentment through Jesus Christ. We already have it. Our solution is not more money or posting our highlights on Facebook or wherever. It is finding contentment in Christ. Our solution for contentment is Christ. Say that with me. Our solution for contentment is Christ. Our passage today, I've learned to be content in whatever I have. I know what it is to have little and I know what it is to have plenty. And in all circumstances, I've learned the secret of being well fed, of going hungry, of having plenty and having need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That's what God expects of us, is to put our faith in God, to let Jesus be our answer, and to find contentment in that. I've been learning a lot about St. Francis the last couple of weeks because Richard Rohr in his daily meditations has been talking about him. And my, my kind of vision most of my life of who St. Francis was, was, you know, whenever you heard him talk about St. Francis, he was always a friend of the animals. And so you'd see a picture of all the animals and the fawns and things were all around him. But, but St. Francis was a radical person. He, in, in his following of God, he was not content even with contentment. He and the order of friars that followed him sought out a life of poverty. And they went to the place of pain and suffering rather than running from it. Richard Rohr put it this way. 
In Francis, we see the emergence of a very different worldview. A worldview that is not based on climbing and achieving, possessing, performing, or any idealization of order, but a life that enjoys and finds deep satisfaction on the level of naked being self. That's different than being naked self. Na naked being. I love that term, that idea that we are just gods. Isn't that kind of a cool vision? And that's where St. Francis directed his entire life. He, he turned his life, he gave away everything he had and, and found deep satisfaction in being where the lost, the lonely, the hungry were. You see, it goes on to say that it's not just a level of naked being self. It's much more than doing or having. In other words, just being. Contentment is found in being. And for us who have known the call of Jesus Christ in our life, that being is being in Christ. Amen? Paul believed this as well, but Paul said not only is there contentment in it, there's power. Listen to his words from 2 Corinthians 12. Therefore, I'm content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, I am strong. Paul said that we, there's a strength in being content and living in Christ. I love, we know this passage from Matthew 6, 24. Most of us have heard it. None, no one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate one or love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. And it goes on to say, you cannot serve God and wealth. And, and that's one of the translations in the King James Version. It always, If you remember, it says, you cannot serve God and mammon. And that's because the word in there is uh, mammonos. And mammonos, uh, in the original translation, Translation does not mean bread on the desert or money. It actually means a perception of wealth. Wealth perceived or wealth personified. So, so we cannot serve this idea of the good life and God at the same time. We can't live like we are one of the TV commercials on televisions and serve God at the same time. That gives it, to me, that gives it a lot more strength than just saying I can't have money because I just don't have it anyhow. It doesn't matter. But that whole idea of wealth personified or lived out in me is adverse to what God is doing. And so the good stuff is not just about money because it is really envy. And it's a battle for the contentment that we have not, can, that can't be won. We just can't get that great. And it's not worth it once we do, if we do. 1 Timothy 6 says, starting in the 6th verse, Of course there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Rohr also said of St. Francis in this idea of letting go, all the conflicts and contradictions of life must find a resolution in us before we can resolve anything outside of ourselves. Only the forgiven can forgive. Only the healed can heal. Only those who stand daily in need of mercy can offer mercy to others. See, it turns out that we do not need to struggle with contentment. We simply need to accept it. It's already ours. It's already a gift through Jesus Christ. And today, as we prepare for communion, I want you to remember those words I just read a little bit earlier. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing 
of the body of Christ, brothers and sisters, we have the good stuff in Jesus Christ. Join me as we pray the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.